بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my dear brothers Islam around the world this is the, again the sleep to Allah subhanahu wa jalla at your service your brother in Islam brother Ala coming to you live from Canada may Allah subhanahu wa jalla protect you your family health and wealth and accept all your good deeds your siyam your qiyam your quran your sujood your ruku' your dua your tajarrud everything else that comes with the month of Ramadan may Allah bless it for you may Allah subhanahu wa jalla accept it from you Amin. Today we are going to start a new series, inshallah. It's the journey of the soul. This is one of my dearest uh, series into my heart because this is really what got this poor slave back, Allah, back into a in, uh, straight path. And alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, under the, the hand of Dr. Umar Abdul Khafi, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and preserve him, ya Rabbi Ameen. And this is exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to take you on a journey of the soul. The journey of the soul, we're going to be four episodes. The first one, we're going to talk about death. May Allah grant us a good ending, ya Rabbil Alameen. The second one, we're going to talk about the Alam and Barzakh, the second stage, which I will tell you there are five stages that we're going to go through in this one specifically. The second stage is going to be in the grave, and the third stage will be the Alam and Barzakh, and the this is a Ba'ath, resurrection. And the last one, inshallah, Wallahi ma ba'da dunya min dar illa jannah aw nar, which means there is no dwellings after this life except heaven or hell. So we'll talk about the last one. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the hellfire and grant us the ability to be able to be the dwellings of the heaven, hence the true ultimate winning, according to the Qur'an, فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ النَّارُ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ فَقَدْ فَاز Those who are distant away from the hellfire and granted permission to enter paradise, that's the ultimate triumph. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the faizin, among the winners in this life in the hereafter. So I'm going to start with this journey with inviting you on a trip with me. I want you to imagine that you had a, a tough day. Uh, your boss was giving you a hard time, your spouse was giving you a hard time, your children are driving up the wall, especially when you're now in quarantine. You're inside the house, you can't do anything else. You're just there and you are now saying, you know what, I want to stop the world, I want to get off. Let me take a vacation. And you go on the net and you find some halalish, halal enough vacation and you book it. And you receive an email and the email actually says, go ahead, open up, your itinerary is available. And when you open up, here's what you're going to get. And I want you to think about it and see what you feel. Congratulations, your booking is confirmed. However, you don't need luggage with you because where you're going, you will not need them. And by the way, it's a one-way ticket. You're not coming back. Your captain is the angel of death. Your accommodation is six feet beneath the ground. Your destination is unknown. Can you imagine if you get that email, my brothers and sisters, will you actually worry about anything else in your life? Will you worry that your uh, cousin so-and-so served you a leftover food and you have debts on this guy or you, have, uh, you didn't get the promotion that you were looking for and everything else? Wallahi, nothing will matter at this time. So I'm going to tell you, my brothers and sisters, this is exactly what I want you to think about it. I want you to think that this is nothing matter. The priorities for me is exactly I have to prepare for that. And when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, Mata sa'a, when is it exactly? And I'll tell you why I'm talking about the sa'a shortly, inshallah. When is the time? He did not answer him. It's a long story, but he says after he finished that thing, he says, Who, my, ayna sa'id? Who asked about it? He says, you know, when is the hour? He says, Ma He did not tell him about the minor signs of times, about the major signs of times, and any of that stuff. And that's the question I'm going to ask you in the beginning. I'm going to ask you the same in the end of that lecture, inshallah. Ma What have you prepared for it? Are you ready to put your head on the pillow not to be able to raise it back up again? Are you ready to be the last blink of an eye, last pulse of the heart, and last breath you take? Are you ready? And if you're not, why? And ask yourself, it must be because of a sin. And why shouldn't we get rid of the sin that you're afraid of dying of for? And why don't we have a new leaf? And I'm going to tell you exactly when I put my head on the pillow, I'm going to say that this is exactly how I'm going to put my place in the grave. And now as I am preparing myself in that, I'm going to also prepare myself for the questions of the answer. But that's the next episode, inshallah. So I want you to think about it. الله سبحانه وجل في ولاه الله عباد الفطنة طلق الدنيا وقاف الفطنة نظروا فيها فلما رأوها ليس تحي مسكنة اتخذوها لجة واتخذوا صالح الأعمال فيها سفنة. You know what that means, my brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa taala has intellectual individuals that looked at this life and they saw the truth about it. It is not the real thing. And you will know why because the ayat and the hadith is the same. So they took the righteous deeds to be the safety boat to get them to the shores of Jannah. 
and that's what we have to do. آية مدع الفهم إلى تم يا أخ الوهم تعبي الذنب والذم وتخطي الخطأ الجم أما بان لك العيب أما أنظرك الشيب Oh my dear brothers and sisters Oh who you think that you are a knowledgeable scholar you have it all covered you got it all down and you're ready to rock and roll paint the town red you do the bar hopping يا نفس هدي ما عليك أدي I am the God's gift to women and all of that stuff right when we are doing this, my brothers and sisters, you are actually walking on something that you will be under in a few days, in a few, a few days, a few months, a few weeks, a few seconds. We don't know that. And that's why the earth says, Yabna Adam, Tamshi ala fawqi wa ba'da qalila takuna fi jawfi. O child of Adam, you are walking above me, but in, very shortly you will be in beneath me. You know why? And that's why the scholars will says, Min turabin ala turab, fa hisabun aw iqab. He says, this is, we come from the earth. Min turab. Ala turab. Then above the earth. Ila turab. Then back to it again. Minha khalaqnakum wa fiha nu'idukum. Minha rukhjirun tarab ukhra. Fa thawabun am iqab. This hisab, this reckoning, is either be heaven or hell. And that's where you end up with the series, inshallah. So I want you to think about this, my brothers and sisters, and think about it. How you came to this life, how you're going to end up in this life. And the comparison again. Remember, when you came to this life, somebody made a noise. Somebody's happy you're here. When you leave this life, somebody's going to make a noise. Somebody is saddened for your departure. And when you came to this life, a nurse gave you a ghusl, shower. And when you leave this life, somebody will give you a shower. And when you came to this life, after the shower, the nurse shrouded you in a blanket. When you leave this life, after your ghusl, you will be shrouded. When you came to this life, somebody made the adhan in your right ear, hopefully your father. First thing you heard was Allahu Akbar. So live accordingly. Allahu Akbar means what? God is greater than what? Everything. It's mubhama for a reason. It's actually indefinite. It's identified because of a reason. Because what is it exactly? You don't say it's God is the greatest. It's incorrect translation actually. Where the scholar says God is greater. And it's left for that reason. Because what is greater than what? He says everything. So if you live by that, you will die accordingly. And that's the first thing you hear in your right ear. Believe it or not. Is the word Allahu Akbar, the Adhan, from your father. So when you die, there is no Adhan. There is no Aqama. And that's exactly what you will do. When you leave, you will get the same. When you come to this life, you'll be giving a birth certificate. When you leave this life, you'll be giving a death certificate. In the beginning and the end, you collect certificates. You graduate, you get a certificate. You get a job, you get a certificate. You get a car, you get a certificate. You get married, you get a certificate. But when you die, you will not need that certificate. But the most important certificate of all my brothers and sisters are 99 files, every file, as far as your eyesight can see. And that's your third episode of this series, inshallah. We will talk about it. So I want you to think. The questions are granted in the womb of your mother. Same questions will be granted in the womb of the earth. And that you have to come back again next week, inshallah, in order for you to understand what I'm talking about. Let us now go to the ayat and the hadith. And hopefully we just paved the path to understand the magnitude of the end. So you'll know the importance of the beginning where you are right now. Because you will get wishes, wallahi, my brothers and sisters. I want you to remember this. The scholars will say that you will get wishes on Judgment Day. Among them, he says, قَالَ رَبِّ رُجِعُونَ Oh Allah, let me come back. لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلْ صَالِحًا فِي مَا تَرَكْتِ كَلَّا إِنَّهَا كَلِمَةٌ هُوَ قَائِلُهَا وَمِنْ وَرَائِهِمْ بَرْزَخٌ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ Allah subhanahu wa jalla says that you will be granted wishes. But some of them will be granted, some of them will be denied. Among them, this one will be denied. Oh Allah, give me one more chance to come back to this light. I've seen the light, I'm healed, I repent, I believe, and all of that, whatever we can do. And then when you come back, Allah says, Kalla, inna, it's verbal, it's just a, a, a word, it's a lip service, Akhi and Ukhti. So if Allah subhanahu wa jalla will grant you that opportunity, so take advantage of it. And that's why the scholar says, how much will you pay on judgment day? If you come back to this earth, knowing what you will know, that you've seen the heaven and I've seen the hell, and you've seen the angels, you've seen everybody else, how much would you pay to come back here? He says, I will give everything. That's my umniya. That's my wish. He says, Anta fi umniya. The scholars will tell you, you are actually living this wish. Do you believe it, brothers and sisters, how lucky we are? We can actually say, I still believe there is only one God. I still say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Well, everything is there with you. You can do your qiyam, you can do your sujood, you can do everything. But when you leave, that's it. The karaf is done. But here I'm to tell you, 
that actually when you die, you're not done. The stages that I was talking about is actually five. The scholar says, first one is the alam al -dur. He says, when we were spirits in our back of our Adam's four, forefathers and Adam alayhi salam, and this is called the alam al -dur. The second one is actually when you're in the womb of your mother. The third one is taklufa, that we were living right here. Dunya, this life is a taklufa, your obligation. Yes. Number four is your grave. And number five is your resurrection. So when you're when you die, only the body dies, but the soul actually goes from Baina Hayatain. You're living between Alam, this dunya, Darul Ibtila, and the other one, Darul Baqa. Barzakh. You so this life is the test and the eternal life. And between them, there is barzakh. Now, understanding that, my dear brothers and sisters, let us continue the journey. May Allah make that journey the best of journeys, Ya Rab. Ameen. Allah subhanahu wa jalla viola says, Khalaqa al mawta wal haya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created death before life. Logically, it doesn't make sense, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts the emphasis on death because that's the criterion. You'll find out that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and you will know why shortly, inshallah. Akthiru min dhikr hadim al Remember death in abundance. Because that's the criterion. In that fraction of second, you will leave this dunya to be in another eternal life. Temporary, unknown, then eternal. But it's going to be an interesting journey. So, fasten your seatbelt. And here we go. Are you ready? Bismillah. Allah subhanahu wa jalla fila says, Bel tu'thirun al hayat al dunya wal akhiratu khayru wa abaqa. Because you are actually living between those two lives, but people say, Ithar. You know what, Ithar? This is my place. I want to invest in everything here. That, but Akhirah, the hereafter, is the best for you. So let me give you an example. If I were to tell you I'm going to give you an, an office, but this office is temporary. You're going to stay in this office for one week. What are you going to do with this office, Akhirah? Are you going to put the best chandeliers, the best carpets, the best everything? Or are you going to say, you know what, temporary, man. I'm just going to stay here for one week, and I'm going to move on. But if I were to tell you this office is permanent for you, what are you going to do? Yes, I'm going to invest in it. I'm going to be here for as long as I live. That's it. So that's why the scholars say, if I were to give you a temporary silver or a temporary gold or permanent silver, what you take? Most of us will say, I'll take the permanent silver because temporary, you will give it, I'll take it back. So it's not mine, really. So this is why are you holding on to the temporary silver and letting go of permanent gold? Temporary silver, this what this life, you're letting go of a permanent gold. So if you're given a choice between you sitting under a shade of a tree in a hot summer day or under the, the direct uh, sun heat, the heat of the sun, which one you will take? Of course, we'll take the, the shade of a tree. And that's why, again, the scholars will ask you, why is it then that you're choosing Hellfire over heaven. It's a choice, my brothers and sisters. You know why it's a choice. Allah subhanahu wa jalla fila says, إِنَّمَا هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا مَتَاعٌ وَإِنَّ الْآخِرَةَ هِيَ دَارُ الْقَرَارِ This dunya, you know what mata'a is? Everything that the possession you have. Everything. You know, this thing is a mata'a. Everything that you have is called mata'a. Mata'a. It's temporary that you have. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you the hereafter is dar al-qarar. You know what that means? You're not moving anymore. How many of us change our address? How many of us sit so long to someone we love so much? How many have shed tears over one that we said, uh, I'll see you in Jannah, inshallah, after a long, healthy, righteous life? How many times do you forward your this and you've seen and you've moved? And you, how many times? So Allah says, this is Dar al-Qarar. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Worship your Lord till death comes upon you. Yaqeen is a certain. That's why. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said that when some of the Sahabi Uthman ibn Mab'un when he says for sure there is no doubt about it when Allah subhanahu wa jalla says وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ ذَلِكَ مَا كُنْتَ مِنْ مُتَحِيدٍ وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ ذَلِكَ يَوْمٌ وَعِيدٌ وَجَاءَتْ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَعَ سَائِقٌ وَشَهِيدٌ لَقَدْ كُنْتَ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مِنْ هَذَا فَكَشَفْنَا عَنْكَ غِطَاءَكَ فَبَصَرُكَ الْيَوْمَ حَدِيدٌ وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ You know what that means? It's in the past tense. 
الموت أقرب إليك من شراك نعلك. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم says death is closer than you. You know that slipper that you have a little bit of a slither of leather that's holding the نعل, the bottom of the slipper to the top of the feet. That is called شراك النعل. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم says your death is closer to you than that. ونحن أقرب إليه من حبل الوريد. We are closer than your jugular vein, but you haven't seen it yet. So, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, What is the haq? The, the anguish of death has come with the truth. What is the haq? Al-haq annaka zatamut. The truth that you will die. And the truth you will never be able to come back. And the truth, no matter how skillful the doctor is, he cannot help you. And no matter how good the raqi is, will not help you. And the truth is that we will carry you on the shoulders. And the truth is that we will be in the janazah. The truth is you'll be going into the grave. And the truth is you'll be resurrected. And the truth is you will have your book with the right or the left. And the truth is you'll stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And the truth is it's either heaven or hell. بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبَقَى And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Yeah. كلا إذا بلغت الطراق وقيل من راق وظن أنه الفراق والتفت الساق بالساق إلى ربك يوم إذن المساق الله سبحانه وجل في جس when the the tarak you know what tarak is the scholar says either the soul comes back to the turqwa which is this area here or tarak your soul will actually be tarak and will be taken up from one angel to another وقيل من راق قيل من راق two opinions one is who's going to give رقية to this person or who, the other opinion is, who is the angel that will be taken up to that? Two opinions again. The saq will cross over when you die, or the saq, the angel will take you over to another angel. Are you ready for that? Allahu Akbar. And that's what we're trying to prepare you for, my dear brothers and sisters. Because some of the righteous says to Amir al Mu'mineen, he says, Wallahi, if you do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you to do, and you follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And you look after your ra'iyya of your shepherds. And you are making sure that you are not oppressing anyone. He says, فالموت, this death will be the best thing that happened to you. You will look forward to it. And if you don't, تتحصر وتتندم وتندم على ذلك. He says, if you don't do that, you will regret and remorse everything. And death will be the worst thing that ever happened to you. As opposed to the best thing ever happened to you. So when Allah subhanahu wa jalla wa gave us this opportunity to live, to plant a seed for the hereafter as cultivation, let's take advantage of it. Allah subhanahu wa jalla wa gave us that. Inna yaqeen, certainty, let us now not doubt any of it. And again, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says, Allahumma la aisha illa aisha al akhirah This is in Sahih Bukhari. And he actually used to say it even for Lil Anfari wal Muhajira. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bi Allah anima jma'in. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Surah Al Jumu'ah, uh, verse number 8, Kul inna al mawta alladhi tafiruna minhu fa inna hu mulaqikum, thumma turadduna ila alim al ghaybi wa shahada, fa yunabbikum bima kuntum ta'amalun. Kul talqiniya, tell them, O Muhammad, inna, for sure, it's verily, ta'akid, there's no doubt, ta'akid. It says, inna al mawta alladhi tafiruna minhu. This death that you're running away from, where are you running from? Do you think that the others have lasted more than you? Do you think the throne that you're fighting for, how did it get to you? Wasn't it there before somebody else? But if it came to you, it doesn't mean that it's eternal, my brothers and sisters. Think about it. So it says this death that you're trying to run away from you, from, it says, فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِكُمْ Whether you're running away, he's, it's going to come to you, whether you like it or not. And that's why it's actually called Musiba al You know what a Musiba is? You know, I want you to think that on the back, on your back, you have a target, like a bullseye. As the angel of death already let go of an arrow, and that is coming directly to you, my brothers and sisters. It's just a matter of time. So the scholar says, it's tanazuli. It's actually counting down, not counting up your age. It says, from the day you were born, you're counting down closer to your grave. Understand, that's why Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, used to say, Wallahi, ma min yawm, sharqat alayhi, ashraqat alayhi shams, talaat alayhi shams. زاد إيماني فيه وعمل صالح. says there is no good a day for me. it's not a good day when the sun rises and my iman does not increase and my righteous deeds do not increase. so how are you doing, my sisters? every day that comes in, how many mazid? do I make more money or do I actually put more 
deposit in the, in the bank with Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula. And that's why Prophet Muhammad sallallahu had told us to remember death in abundance. And I'll tell you a reason why. He says, ذِكْرُ الْمَوْتِ فَوَعِدْ عَظِيمًا There's a lot of benefits in it. فَهُوَ أَدْعَى لِقِصَرِ الْأَمَلِ فِي الدُّنْيَا It is actually, it invites you to cut off that false hope, you know, بَحْرِ التَّمَنِّي You know, some people, سَوْفَ uh, أَتُوبُ uh, I will repent. When? Uh, when I get 40. After I get married. Uh, you know, after I, I perform Hajj. But wallahi, we're not guaranteed to reach any of them. Yes. No one is guaranteed anything. So he says, this thick remote, it reminds you of that. It shortens the hope. And that's what he says, وَزُهْدِ dunya. You renounce this life. وَالْحِرْصَ عَلَى الْعَمَلِ الصَّالِحِ And you're cautious to do righteous deeds and excel in it and hold yourself accountable before you're held accountable and you weigh your actions before they're weighed onto you and repenting to, to expedient. Haste in repentance. Do not procrastinate. And give back the rights of people because they, before they come to you on judgment day. So I'm going to give you five invasions that you have to make sure that you are aware of it. The first invasion, the scholar says, with the malakul maut. Five invasions you have to be aware of and you have to protect yourself from. The first invasion, the angel of death. By the way, he will not make an appointment. He will not come and say, excuse me. Can I make an appointment with you? Can you, can you? can you see my secretary? Secretary and secretary and secretary and all of that. Wallahi, there is no secretary. Nothing. It, that's it. Time comes up, you're up. And now, the second one, he says, Munkar wa nakir. He says, you're, the angels, when we'll talk about the details, inshallah, next episode, will come and set you up. And the third, he says, when? He says, when that dude, when the worms come and gobble you up. And when you're resurrected. When people come. This is Fulan ibn Fulan. So this is so and so. This is Magharat Mavalim. Your people come and invade you. And they take your good deeds because you oppressed this. And you did that. You black, you backbited this and all of that stuff. And the last one is the Zabania. The angels. Whether you'll take you in heaven or hell. This is Magharat. So please be careful my brothers and sisters with the invasions and that what you have to prepare. So when you do so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a chance every day to give back before it's too late. And he says, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu says, salatik. Remember death in your prayer. So if you remember death when you're praying, it is a, an indication, indicative for you to be excelling in doing good in your deeds. So, Sallu Salat Amwadda. Pray if this is your last prayer. Every time. I want you to think of this, my brothers and sisters. When you pray, this is your last prayer. According to this prayer, you're going to go to heaven and hell. And this is what Prophet Muhammad says. So, wa fi sabahik, he says, in the morning, idha asbahta fala tantadir al masa. That's how we live. So, if you wake up in the morning, don't wait for, for night time. And when you go at night, don't wait for the morning. That's it. You're not guaranteed. And take from this life to the hereafter, to your death. And take from your health to your illness. Says that from the time that you have, that you have none. And that's why Prophet says, Take advantage of five before five. Among them is what we just talked about. And when we sleep, my brothers and sisters, Allahumma inni aslam tu nafsi ilayk. Bismika rabbi wada'atu jambi wa bismika rafa'u. Allahumma inni amsakta nafsi farhamha wa nasaltaha fahfadha bima tahrub fiya bayad al-salahi. You know why? Because when you sleep on your right is exactly how we're going to be sleeping in the grave. So in, in, in your name, ya Allah. In your, in your name, I place my, my side. In your name, I raise my side. Oh Allah, if you hold my, the soul, have mercy upon it. And if you release it, protect it from that as you protect the righteous slaves. And that's what we're doing, my brothers and sisters, because when we're sleeping, it's called the Mawt al sughra the minor death. And I talked to you about the time. So let me talk about it just before as a segue again. Please understand, when we die, it says your minor qiyama. Again, I'll talk about it next episode, inshallah. Your minor qiyama when you die, my brothers and sisters. I don't think you're going to have to wait till thousands of years till you think what it is. Ah, ayyana musa. Yeah? When is it? Oh, it's too far, too long. No. When you die, 
your the your minor qiyama a minor judgment day is started and that's when we're asking my brothers and sisters please note that mount could be a good thing or could be a bad thing who's a good for a true believer may allah make us among them ya Rabbi. because you paid your dues now you're it's you know what when the, with some of them she says yeah, do you want to take me back to the hardship difficulties in this life take me to the merciful god yes and that's the truth but the the disbeliever it is a totally different story so you understand now death could be the best thing ever happened to you or the worst thing ever happened to you and this is what the bushara the good the, the angels will give you good yeah, good news inshallah at the time of death Allah subhanahu wa jalla says, Inna ladina qalu rabbun Allah, thumma staqamu tatanazzil alayhi wa malayika. Alla takhafu wa la tahzanu wa abshiru bil jannah allati kuntum tu'adun. Nahnu awliyakum fi hayati dunya wa fi al-akhirah. Wa lakum fiha ma tashtahi anfusukum. Wa lakum fiha ma tadda'un. Nuzlam min ghafoor rahim. Allahu akbar. Allahumma ja'alna minayim rabb. Inna, again it's mashruta, conditional. Inna ladina qalu rabbun Allah. Those who say our Lord is Allah. Thumma staqamu. Then you are straight therein. The angels descend upon them. You should not be afraid. And you should not be saddened. You know why we're saddened and why you're afraid, Akhi? See, the scholars will ask you, why are you, what are you afraid of? You're usually afraid of something in the future. But they will ask you again, what are you saddened about? You're usually saddened about in the past. So you're afraid of the future. You're not even, you're not sure where you're going to go or even how to pay the bills. Am I going to keep my job or somebody going to die or am I going to keep the house? You're afraid of the future, but you're saddened about something, some sins you made, decisions you made in the past. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah takhafu, don't be afraid of the future. The angels will be there to guide you straight through this. And don't be saddened about the past. وَأَبْشِرُوا Have the good news, the glad tidings بِالْجَنَّةَ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُعَدُونَ With Jannah that you were promised. May Allah make us among them, Ya Rabbah. نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَةِ الدُّنْيَا Your guardians are here. We'll take you. Don't worry about it. The angel, the guardian angels, for real this time. Not the, what we think. He says, in the dunya, in the hereafter, we will help you. And anything you wish for, it will be there for you. Allahu Akbar, my brothers and sisters. So we can understand now, when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu says, إذا ابتلى الله العبد والمسلم ببلاء في جسده قال الله عز وجل اكتبوا له صالح عمله فإن شفاه الله غسله وطهره وإن قبره غفر له هذا صن صحيح صحيح الجامع وإن الله سبحانه وجل في الله قابل محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم said if Allah tests you and He's testing us right now you mahis al umma you know the the aqnia zalat the masks have fallen خلاص I'm not talking about the mask you put on your uh, your mouth right now no the true mask you know the obscure vision that you cannot see not just with your eyes, you cannot even see with your heart. The truth is here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us. And it's good. I'm telling you, it is good. Wallahi, there's so much good behind this. At least if awakening to come back before it's too late. Maybe we'll give them a taste of punishment in this life before the taste of the hereafter. So they'll come back. And that's why Prophet said, if you're tested, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the angels, tell the angels to write down from their good deeds. And if that they've given you shifa, they've given you a cure, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will purify you. And if that, if you are dying, Allah will forgive you. So everything, wonders of a true believer's actions. Everything is good to them, whatever happens to them. And I repeat again, that's why everybody says Muslims are the best to handle these crises and this pandemic because if that's what we believe, our aqidah accordingly, inshallah. So I'm going to uh, ask you, brothers and sisters, to finish off with a, 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 at least one hadith uh, at least uh, there's a couple of hadith that I actually wanted to share with you but maybe we'll just finish one because of the time so this hadith is a bit long but uh, we will take the gist of it inshallah so th this one Imam Ahmad rahmatullahi fi musnadi an al bara ibn Azam radiyallahu anhu an-nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna al abd al mu'min this is what we finish with inshallah inna al abd al mu'min idha kana fi inqita'in min al dunya wa iqbal min al akhirah if the true believer, a slave, a true believer, is coming up to the end of this life, coming on to that next life, the angels will descend from the heavens. 
beautiful lit faces. Their faces are like that sun. They have a shroud and a coffin from Jannah. Allahu Akbar. And they will sit across the horizon, whatever you can see, as far as your eyesight can see. Then the angel of death will come. And the angel of death will be right at your head. And he will say, Oh, this kind, gentle soul. Come out to the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pleasure. As if your soul will leave your body as if it's water drop coming out of the spout of a pot. Ya salam. Beautiful, but I want you to keep that in mind and compare it to the other one in the end of the hadith. So the angel of death will take away your soul. So you have a choice. You have a choice. You tell me how you want your soul to leave your body. As a drop of water leaving a spout, a pot, and if the angel of death will hold it, the other angels of mercy will not leave it in the hand of the angel, a blink of an eye. They will take it right away. So, and they will put it in that shroud and the coffin of that, of that from the coming from the, from the heavens. And he says, says, this will be a beautiful, a, a musk aroma. The best aroma that you've ever smelled in this life. Like, you know, remember when you're really hungry and you're breaking your... Uh, you're fasting and you smell like biryani. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> yes, Allah, mashallah. Everything will taste like ice cream. Everything, subhanAllah, everything smells good. But this one here, a beautiful aroma, a beautiful musk, the best thing. You will go into this coffin smelling the best thing. You will smell the best, subhanAllah, ajeeb Allah. He says, فَيَصْعَدُونَ بِهَا فَلَا يَمُرُّونَ Meaning, that they will, will ascend to it and they will not pass by. يعني على الملائكة. That means well, the angels will go up to another layer of, of heaven and the other angels. The angel says, who is this gentle, beautiful soul? This is so and so, so. Allah, could you imagine your name mentioned to the angels? By the angels, Allahu Akbar. By the best of names that you will call on this earth. So what will your name be? Remember when I was talking about the fast forward brothers and sisters, what will your name be? What will your legacy be? What will you be known for? You know when the, the Hassan al-Basri rahmatullahi alayhi, when he said about a, a person, you know what? I was worried about so much about uh, what will people say? Do you think, what will people say about you? What do you think people will say about you if you die? So they will say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raj'oon. So what, do you know what he meant? He says, yes, he translated, there's no... It says, if you know for sure that you're going to be created, that you know that you will die. And if you know that you will die, that means you will be going to the grave. And you know if you're going to go to the grave, you'll be resurrected. And if you know that you're going to be resurrected, that means you stand in front of Allah. And if you know if you're going to stand in front of Allah, then you know that you will be asked the question. It says, then you better prepare the answer for the question, brothers and sisters. Again, that is your fourth, that's your third halaqa, inshallah, the lecture coming up. But now, let us continue with the hadith, inshallah. Best names that you will call in this, this dunya. And they will reach the heavens. The, the, this level here of heavens. Then that means what? There is gates. So it's not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant permission for the angels to go ahead and open that. The gates of the of the first seven. Now you know what? Who will uh, take you as a parade? The best of the levels of every heaven, they will take you up. Allahu Akbar. Then the one, the next level, the next level, the next level. Until you get to the seventh firmament, seventh heaven. Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will say, in your honor, اكتبوا كتاب عبدي في عليين. Write the book of my slave in the highest level. And take him back to earth. And indeed, I created them from it. And in it, they're going back to in it. And indeed, they will be coming back out of it again to be resurrected. 
فتعاد روحه في جسده فيأتيه ملكان فيجلسان and then those are two angels the, the, the ruh will come back to the jasad to the, the soul will come back to the body and then the two angels munka wa nakir which we'll talk about again uh, I'll repeat the next episode inshallah they will come up and usually sani they will sit him up to ask him the questions we'll talk about it inshallah the next time fadhakar fadhakar al hadith fi su'al al qabr i'm not going to go there okay not yet said so now the opposite is true allahu akbar i wanted to finish with a positive wallahi but it's amanat al-ilm now. The hadith, the siyaq al-hadith, the narration as such, as the narration of the chain. So let's, uh, we're going to go. He says now, فَإِذَا رُوحُ الْكَافِرُ قُبِضَ رُوحُ الْكَافِرُ This is the same. Status is the same. So, but when the disbeliever, the, the soul is taken away, it says, فَيَسْعَضُونَ بِهَا فَلَا يَمْرُونَ بِهَا عَلَى مِنْ مَلَائِكَ إِلَّا قَالُوا مَا هَذَا الْرُوحُ الْخَبِيرُ What is this stinking rotten aroma? He says, if that case, this is so and so with the worst names that he was called upon on this earth. This level here says, It says, Go ahead, open the gates. The gates are shut. You shall not pass. When when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recited this ayah, that the doors will not be open for them and they will not enter paradise mm -hmm. until and unless if the, uh, the jamal, the camel, will go inside the, 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 the needle, the hole. It, obviously, it is making a mockery of them and it's impossible. And since the, the camel will never be able to go into, into that small place, of course, they will not be entering paradise. SubhanAllah. A choice you have to make, my brothers and sisters. So again, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he said, فَيَقُولُ الله عز وجل, uh, اكتبوا كتاب عبدي في سجين. Write my book in the, in the, in the lowest rank in, on earth. The, the lowest of the lowest. فَتُطْرَحْ رُوحُ وَتَرْحَمْ You know what that means? He's not going down with the angel's uh, accommodation, nice and gentle. He says he will be let go, free falling from the, from the, from the top. وَمَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ and he قَرَأَ then he recited this ayah وَمَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَكَأَنَّمَا خَرَّ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَتَخَطَّفُهُ الطَّيْرِ and if he's free falling from that from the, from the heavens as if the, 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 the birds are just snatching them out of the air أَوْ تَهْوِ بِهِ الْرِيحِ or the, 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 the wind will be slapping them all over the place في مكان صحيق deep in a very deep depth of the earth lowest of the lowest فَتُعَادُ رُوحُهُ فِي جَسَرِهِ Again, he will go back the ruh into his body. وَيَأْتِيَهِ مَلِكَانِ Again, the angels will come when he goes into the grave. And the two angels will come and ask him the question. And that's where I'm going to leave you for the next one. I'm going to remind you again. You have a choice, my brothers and sisters. To be, your soul be taken out the way that you heard. You have a choice to be shrouded in a coffin from Jannah or Hellfire. You have a choice to smell the best aroma or the worst of aroma. You have a choice to be called by the best names or the worst names. You have a choice, you have a choice, you have a choice. But when? As long as you're breathing, as long as you're blinking, as long as you're pulsing. But when is this going to stop? The eyes are closed. The tongue is thick. Feet are cold. What will you do then? And what will you come? And what will they say? And how will you end up? You want to know how? It says, وَلَا تَمُتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ Muslim. And Allah subhanahu wa jalla says, do not die except in a state of Islam. You know why? Because you will die the way you lived. And you will be resurrected the way you died. And that's why the death is the pivotal point that proves how you lived and will give you an indication how you'll be resurrected. And that's why we'll end with this dua, inshallah. Oh Allah, we ask you by a magnificent name to make our last words to be la ilaha illallah make of the best of deeds be the last of deeds and the best days when we meet Allah subhanahu wa jalla fila with no accountability. Ameen. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Ameen. Wa salam ala alihi wa sahbihi wa tabi'in. Zakum Allah na khaira. Wa salam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We'll see you inshallah next week for the grave. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our grave a piece of heaven not a piece of hell. Ameen. Wa salam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.